Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're going to continue on this 1974 Honda ST90. Kind of the big brother of the CT70. It yeah, has the fold down handlebars and, and all that. Anyway, uh, we're, I think, two videos into this already. The first one, we just kind of got an assessment of what we had and got it to kind of run on spray a little bit for a couple of seconds. Second video, we went through it more, went through the fuel system. The gas tank was nasty. Carb uh, needed to be addressed. Bent a bunch of pieces back in together, restored the exhaust on it, uh, rear fender, the lights were all bust up and bent up, got all that kind of squared away on the back side of it. This was all twisted up and kitty wampus. So hopefully we'll continue and get it done on this one. What we got left to do? Uh, I want to change the fluid in the front forks and we got to straighten out the front fender, go th look at the brakes, see what condition they're in. The seat needs to be restored, as you can tell. Uh, go through the levers, need to be reworked. Air cleaner assembly put back on it. Kickstart is missing the rubber on the end there. And then the headlight assembly needs to uh, be addressed. It was looking pretty good. Again, the back of the bike is all kind of squared away. That was all bent up and twisted up. It's all gotten fixed up on the last one. Now we gotta do the same thing to the front. So I think probably what our best bet is, we'll take the bike out of the stand. We'll flip it around so the back tire is in the chalk and we can have the front tire assembly floating out here and we'll start working on that. All right, well, further ado, let's get to some wrenching. Let's see what we get for oil coming out of that front end, if any. 50 years of sitting around. <laughs> I think you gotta compress them to get the oil to shoot out, or what we can do is loosen the caps on the top, you gotta be, uh, uh, be able to let air get in. I think that's kind of what, you know, you hold the, put your straw in a drink and you put your thumb over and you lift it up, it kind of stays there. I think that's what's happening right here. Yeah, that, there's nothing in it. And you know, we go get a wrench on the top, we'll pop them open. Let's see what happens. There's probably a spring in here that's going to pop out. Depends. Sometimes you got tension on them, sometimes they don't. Anything? That should have been enough to let air in. There she goes. And I think from the factory on these older bikes, it's just uh, automatic transmission fluid. Yeah, I want to make sure we catch all that. Just kind of get an idea how much comes out of it. Should be around, I think, 3.6 ounces. So I'm going to let that run a little bit. I'll do the same on the other side. We've got another container over there. And we'll let that pee out. Looks pretty good up top though. I don't see any real heavy damage on here. There's a, a wiper or seal right here that uh, gets beat up as you get like a little rust dimples in it. Every time the fork passes through it, it kills the seal. These are old. Uh, sometimes you'd be surprised. I'll, I'll take them apart and they'll be leaking like a sieve and you change oil in them. It, it, they close right up, sometimes not. So we'll see. I don't know if we're going to get 3.6 out of that, though. Yeah, I do believe a little bit more than that should come out of them. Looking pretty dirty, too. Oh, that one's got chunks in it. I don't know what that, that puddle. Is that water? That's no, just dirt. I'm going to go let the jack down underneath it. We'll give her a couple of uh, pumps on, see if we get any more out of it. We'll go measure that up, see what comes out. That's about it. Bouncy now. <laughs> no dampening. That's what the oil is for. Case people are not familiar with bikes is that oil goes through, I'm going to call it like a baffle inside here. There's a, a baffle of sorts with little holes in it and the fluid has to transfer from one side to the other as the suspension moves and that fluid the weight and the amount of it is what dampens that out the top is, is just for seals um, keeping the oil inside the fork and so these are called a wiper and there's like a seal that's below that all right let's go measure that up see what came out of it and we'll put some new stuff in it i remember telling us the story about um the mini bike, we had a, a mini bike. It was a piece of crap. It had 
no brakes, no throttle, and the, the clutch was shot, so we like hammer clothespins in it. So you'd run around the sand pit with it, and it would start firing, coughing, and run, and it would run till it died. And well, it would run till you crashed. <laughs> And then uh, generally the chain would pop off, it would over rev and it would die. And then it'd be, the, you know, ne my next friend's turn to go, go for a ride. We thought that thing was the fastest thing in the world. We were like, man, it could, you know, it just ran full throttle and no suspension. It just seemed like it was. Um, until you got on like an RM or something. One of the kids got, so we want 3.6. Actually, it looks really close. I want to see it's very far off from what it's supposed to be. Almost right on the money. Yeah. That's a little low. That's three. So we want to be just a little bit higher than that. So we're going to go fill up some automatic transmission fluid. This seems like a little heavier weight too. Yeah, the, the Can-Am started showing up in the sand pit. And the RMs. <laughs> the ITs. And that's what our little mini bikes. Kind of a rude awakening. But again, when you're 10, 12 years old, they do seem like the fastest thing in the world. All right, let's go get that in there and we'll button that up. Maybe we'll get that front wheel off of there and take a look at what we got going on for brakes. I'll tell you, that old stuff smells like sour grapes, like old gear oil. And that's three. And kind of split the difference in there. Go with right about, what you call that 3.7? From your view, it probably looks like four. If I find it has a uh, crappy ride afterwards, like not enough dampening, we'll just change it out again. It'd be good to kind of flush it anyway. Let that kind of uh, splush, splush, splash through the system. Let's see if we can make a mess out of this. Kind of want to not let it get airlocked. You know, you fill the funnel up too quick and it bubbles back. Yeah, like that. <laughs> I think um, like fork oil is like I want to say like between 7 and 10 weight okay yeah motor oil weight 30 weight 40 weight fork oil is I think somewhere between 2 and 10 is like the norm yeah, except for the modern stuff. I'm sure it gets more fancy, but this older stuff. The guy actually might even call out for uh, ATF on the old bikes, not fork oil stuff. All right, repeat that on the other side. Put those caps back on. Yeah, let's give her a couple of pumps. See how it feels. There's a joke there. Put the handlebars up, too. There we go. Okay, I think it needs a little bit of trail riding. Plus, you know, this thing was meant for a 60 pound, 90 pound kid, not a 210 pound kid. Go see if those uh, seals are leaking at all. Get my quick wipe off just to see. Generally, if they're going to blow out on you, you see like an oil ring and a circle around them. We'll find out more after we give her a good ride, but so far, so good. All right, let's go get that front wheel off of there and see what we got going on for brakes. Pretty good. 
don't think this thing has any miles on it either, so. I believe that's the Speedo drive right there. There's little tabs there sticking out. It's a gear that turns the Speedo. I'm also just going to go feel the bearings. See how they are. That one's fine. It looks so clean, I'm not going to bother repacking them. That one's good too. They stay nice and dry over their lifetime. But while the wheel is off, I'm going to take a little bit of time and detail some of that, that rusty chrome and try to make it just a pitted chrome. Afterwards, how's the brake drum itself? That yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah. A lot of times too, you know, especially on kids and riding the trails, you use more of the rear brake than the front brake. I do see one of the, the dust boots is cracking. Sometimes it'll, it'll crack so much it'll just fall off. It'll, when you're done riding, it'll be sitting up there. What they kind of binds up the, from them sitting is the pivot. You can see here's a lever. It's got a spring loaded return. Sometimes this will turn and not return. Let's go grab that brake lever and see what we got. That actually feels really good. The shoes look like they're fine. That's probably what the difference is when, you know, a bike that's been, you know, this one was under a house for 30 years compared to uh, something that's been left out in the yard. Yeah, I don't think I have to do too much tearing of any of that apart. Just kind of clean it up, get rid of some of the crud while it's off. I want to try polishing that rim up and going with something a little different. I got these. This is a pack of you know, different Scotch Brite styles in it. And uh, this seems to be like this one's a little aggressive. And yeah, the chrome's already beat anyway, but I'm thinking maybe we'll go try this one. I don't see any sandpaper in between it. It just looks like um, separate little chunks of uh, scotch Brite, the, the finer stuff. And some of them, they have a sandpaper in it that'll really chew it up, more for sanding. See if we can try to find some kind of variable grinder to put this on, we're kind of running at a slow speed. And uh, maybe we'll, like, we'll soak it with WD or something, see what we get. Yeah, this isn't sketchy at all. This grinder is usually meant to run little cutoff wheels. I have one of those uh, cordless, um, change the angle on this one one of those cordless four and a half inch grinders and, and those you can vary the speed on them all the other ones that are just you plug in the wall they just you know run at one speed don't have a variable to them this one has a forward and reverse on it and the more you go towards one direction you can kind of throttle it like <coughs> that's kind of high So we can throttle it a little bit. Let's see how this works out for us. <laughs> that chuck is definitely not meant for holding uh, that much on there, but you never know until you try, right? Let's go spray her down with some WD. We use that for like the cutting oil. And we might as well do the same on the pad. Give that a little shot. Plus these can stall out much easier where the other ones, they're gonna just rip right through it. So let's see what we get. kicking on. I'm going to do that a little bit. It already looks fairly decent, huh? That pitting's not going to go away, but we'll get it as clean as we can. That looks pretty good. Your eyeballs are dirty, though. I can see little oil specks on you. I got to clean. Yeah, you got everything but, you know, just where the pitting is really deep in there. It's not going to do anything about that, but looks nice and even. You know, if you try to do it by hand, sometimes it gives, like, all the scuff marks on it. That way the wheel is able to, able to spin. Let's go take care of the other side. Got the same on there. I don't know if I want to do this or not. Maybe, maybe not. Kind of a before and after. That's what we're dealing with now. 
know which rest is in there. I'm gonna try that side. Well, I'd say it's a definite improvement. The room's looking much better. But like I said, you can kind of see even right there where I stopped on the edge. I didn't want to go any further because then this was going to start looking like shiny, dull, shiny, dull between the, spark, the spokes. So we'll just leave it like that. You can keep going. You get that stuff to look like a mirror with polishing compound. But we're going to ride this. So I don't really be, don't really be, <laughs> don't really care to be too particular on how clean we get it. I'm just trying to do a, a more of a restoration. Doesn't look too bent either. It's got a little a little um, divot in it. I think it's kind of where the rim is welded. Yeah, I'm in here somewhere. Nothing terrible though. Let's go put it up next to the back room. We'll see the difference between before and after. It's a little hard to get in there. Before? After. I can live with that. Alright, I gotta go clean your eyeballs. You got oil. Try to keep you out of the splatter zone. See how it does on the on the forks. Got some old uh, labeling on there. It's working pretty good. I'll bring you back when I'm done, so your eyeballs stay clean. I tell you, for the short amount of time that the investment is, like five minutes. Look at my. Favorite new little tool to kind of go play with. Definitely makes a big improvement over, you know, here's all the pitting that was before. Seems to go through that fairly well. Again, you still have to get like that outer clear coat off of it once you get that burned away. You can see where some of it's still there. Like I said, we're just making a rider out of it. It'll definitely make a decent improvement. And right, we'll get the other one done and then we'll get that fender out of there. We'll get that cleaned up. We gotta manipulate this brackets all twisted up. Yeah, forks came out nice. Let's get the rest of the fender off of there. The bracket is bent and the fender's bent. Um, we might have to kind of jump back and forth between the two. Or we'll have a real good luck and we'll just eyeball it, you know. Uh, you can see all the hammer in it. It's got a couple of dents in there. Big old hemorrhoid sticking out of that side. And the bracket, let's just try, um, we'll take a rag, we'll wrap some water pumps with a rag and we'll see if we can twist up on that a little bit right now. I got kind of zoomed in. It looks like this area right here is sitting real low, low and on an angle. Let's try putting a rag around it. Let's see. That's going to move pretty easy. Let's get something like that. Look level. Hard to say without the fender on it, right? Uh, I mean, we'll beat the fender. It still looks like it's a little like that yet. Yeah. You can see it right up in there. Let me grab it right here. I'll give it a little bit more tweak there. And we'll beat on that fender. Yeah, let's clean that up first. So we as we're like beating on it, we're not like pushing the rust and scratching it. Let's go give that a little bit of a TLC. I wonder if we should use that same setup or no. You think I'll scratch it up and put like, you know, swirly patterns on it. You kind of want to go like that. Yeah, we'll give it a quick wash. Let's go, uh, I'll wipe that down a little bit more. We'll see if we start getting some of these dents out of it. Maybe uh, a soft bag and we'll try to like tap it with a mallet from the other side. Hey, you can see those dents pretty good now. Unfortunately, what generally happens with me when I try working on thing like this, I end up getting like 900 little tiny dents around it. So I'm gonna try a softer ha uh, hammer and we'll do it on the, the bean bag and see if we can kind of work that out just a little bit. Kind of supports it, you know. Mm. See if that's doing what I expect it. 
Uh, it's okay. You know what doesn't help too is all this rust on the other side too. Yeah, it's a little, a little funky going on. Let's go work on that other one over here. this one in there it'd be a much smoother hit I keep working that I'll bring you back when uh, I make a mess of it that's better ain't great this is where the bracket is too so you don't even really see it, it looks like they didn't even bother finishing the the chrome looks like they chromed it with the bracket on there you can see the color difference let's um see if we can squish some of these lumps on the side out of it. Maybe we try to shove it in that vise that goes wide enough between the soft jaws and we just kind of give her a little squeeze. Gonna make it? There we go. The mean squeeze. I think we'll try to get the the big dents out of it, and then if it's warped at all, we can just kind of manhandle it with our hands. Let's see if we get this one down a little. Let's see if we can concentrate that in one spot more. I don't know if I want to hammer on it. That one's still out too. So we need to give her like that. It's still pretty messed up. I'll show up the camera how much of a, a rack it has to it. I'm gonna go keep picking away at that. See how we do. I wonder if we should maybe if I can try to support it here and here and push down on it. Saw me, I saw it do it. Yeesh. I gotta just look at this line. I can try to get this line going straight. I see it wiggling all around. I'm just gonna try beating against something that's got a little bit of support. That seems to be working better. I, I can I can finagle the line a little bit better. I'll work on that. It seems like once I chased all the the ripples on the sides, got them fairly straight. It doesn't have any rock to it. It's sitting pretty level. You know, it doesn't. Uh, one point's not higher than the other. I think we'll go with that. You can still see, you know, a little bit of something going on there. But again, the bracket goes here, and I'm gonna dump it anyway and screw it all up. I think we could all put the front end pretty much back together and we'll see what we got. Well, I was just going to go throw that fender back on there. I see all the rust that's on it. It's a, it's a tall fender, too. It sits up really high. So I figured, when we try shooting some, um, this is metallic aluminum. I mean, if this is any good. I, I washed it with like hands cleanser and then hit it with a heat gun. See if it does anything that. Actually, not too bad, huh? That way it's. You know, at a glance, it doesn't look terrible. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit, hit it with the heat gun again, I'll give it one more coat, and I'll wipe down the outsides of the fender.
Ooh, that's warm. Woohoo! <laughs> Oof. Yeah, she's toasty. <laughs> All right, throw that back on now. I know for about a half hour's work, I think it came out pretty good. I kind of screwed up. I did try a little bit with that uh, buffer and it scratched it a little too much so you can kind of see it. Should have tried. I thought it was the back of the fender, but oh well. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? See, that looks pretty decent. You know, the components seem pretty good inside. I didn't bother re-greasing anything because it, it all looked perfect. I was just going to leave it alone. I did wish I saw the cracks in that before. I would have ordered a couple of those. But a good time to take them out. Huh. All right, what do you want to get on to next? Probably, um, we'll drop it down. We'll work on this front end a little bit. See what we can do about, you know, cleaning stuff up and getting, like, this... I think it says a piece of clear plastic on it. Probably be able to slice this with a blade. We'll get this off of here and polish these up. And you know, I think we're just pretty much on the bike detailing stuff. <laughs> How it's starting to look anyway. That should have a stop on it, shouldn't it? It seems like it's flopping kind of far. That one works. Are we missing one on the other end? It seemed like it flopped over pretty far, didn't it? Yeah, it's broke off. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do anything about that. Yeah, so it allows the front end to go all the way. That was that happened during one of the crashes. Yeah, I'd say the mirror stems are definitely a bit of a mess. They're pretty much far gone. If I just hit those right on the wire wheel, what it'll do is it'll knock it down to just bare metal. And it'll be bare metal and whatever's left of the chrome when it's done. Instead of rust and what's ever left of the chrome. Yeah, that one's kind of the same way too. I'm gonna go pop them off and then maybe we'll screw with that lever. Maybe we'll just take it right off of there. I'm not sure. And I'll slice that back. before and after like I said they're not gonna come out looking perfect but yeah at least the uh, stem is somewhat shiny pity but shiny yeah, that's just the nature of it I'll keep an eye out doing next year's swap meet for a set but I think these might be original kind of look it and get the other one done yeah so you can slice that back you know where it starts feels like it's right there Probably a good idea at the time. It's easier on your hands, you know. A lot of times, too, the where the ball is on the end there breaks off. And it won't pass inspection. The ball's there for a reason, as far as I understand. Anyway, it could be urban, urban folklore. If you get in a wreck, if you go to get stabbed. By the bar, if it has that broken end on it, it'll punch right into you. Whereas uh, having a ball on the end of it gives you a, a chance <laughs> of not getting impaled and dying from it. And I'm going to go see if, uh, I don't know, did I not just cut through far enough? you think it would just kind of peel off like a... a little bit more. Keep my other hand out of the way, right? The aluminum starts coming out. I know I've gone far enough. I guess. It's like peeling a lobster. <laughs> get the rest of that off of there. We'll probably just take that whole lever right off and I'll, I'll take it over to the wire wheel. And just kind of detail it like we did everything else. Yeah. 
getting cold, the heat's on. Let's see if we can uh, hyperextend that and get that right out of there. There we go. There we go, clean that up. It look terrible. You can tell where it wasn't, wasn't protected, right? Looks better. So one thing the bike's having a problem with, I noticed when I was up there, kind of turned the handlebars, it is very, shouldn't be like that. It's like the bearings are, are clicking through their location. So let's go open up the triple tree and get to the bearings, see what they look like. I don't know if we can just spin this whole assembly off and take it right off of there. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get, might as well take it. Yeah, we gotta take this apart anyway, no matter what. And I'll, I'll get a towel or something, we'll lay the handlebars on the front or on here, and we'll start digging our way into there. You'd think that would spin off of a nut. I don't know how else are we gonna get to the center bearing. I don't know if, let's go ahead and try to take these two bolts back out again and see if this whole thing will pop up and then the bearing is underneath it. This may be capsulated so you can't spin it off. Kind of like seeming what it's like. Yeah, see if they'll wiggle off of there. I tighten that back up again. I would think I would think that has to come off. I, I don't think they would rely on just that. Um, there's a trick to it to because it just feels like the whole thing is spinning. Does it go all the way through? Yes, it does. <laughs> there's a bolt that goes from top to bottom. That makes sense now. I don't wonder why. But of course the fender's back on. There's a bolt spinning down there. And it has a um, cotter key in it. So, not too bad though. We'll just take the three bolts, we'll drop the fender down. Should be able to get to that and pull that stem right out of there. How about that? <laughs> Everything in life's a learning curve, right? That's what holds that together. And let's get this out of our way. We just kind of lay it forward. And we're going to need to get this off. We're going to get that nut off first. It uses like a spanner wrench. Let me go see if I have one that fits that. Let's see. Thinking, is it England? All wrenches are called spanner wrenches. I think that's what we call these here. Got a little paw on it, kind of adjust for the groove. Problem is those teeth underneath are really giving me a run for my money. There's not much room to come down without hitting them. Just in case the thread goes the other way, let's give her a quick shot just to see if um, I'm being a moron. No. I'm gonna work on that. Probably what I'm gonna do is try to tap on that with a hammer maybe. That might be why it's so bindy also. It's coming off, just doesn't know it yet. You see, the secret is, you just have to keep upping the threats until it comes apart. See? Yes, nicely at first. And if not, then you just gotta escalate. So you can get a couple of taps on that. And we should be able to have our top bearing at least exposed to us. Nope. Gotta dig even further. We got one more to go. 
Sometimes that'll be hitting a hand tight. So it's taking a little cap with it. I don't think that's just supposed to go with it, but we'll see. It's knocking. Is that a weird sign? My balls are falling out. All my balls are falling out because the front end's too high. <laughs> the bottom ones are falling out. It's okay. We're gonna take them all, and clean them out anyway, and repack them. I just don't want to lose them. Don't want to lose your balls. I think one of these has a bunch of moisture in it and got cruddy. Yeah, let's go take a. Let's go wipe that one down with a rag and see what it looks like. Yeah, so that, it's got a bunch of rust on it, and the, the balls are trying to roll through the rust. So I'm going to take a mag, and we'll yank all those out of there, and we'll see what we got for the race. I'll take top and bottom, and we'll clean them up, and it should be okay once it's done. As long as it's not too badly pitted, we'll find out that in a minute, though. I just took a magnet, and I picked all them out of there. You can see, like, on the race how much rust is on there, so that's what it's trying to go over. As they try to roll over that, they give like a, a thump thump. Here's the bottom one. I wouldn't say it's terrible. And then there'll be another one up inside there. And there's this one. I think this is the one that was causing it though. You can really see where each ball was sitting for the longest time. I'll stop with the jokes. And that's where it was just causing it to have the, those little detents going around. So this one I should be able to pop out, you just kind of grab up. Generally what you do is you take the front end completely off, which I don't know if I want to go do that. You stick a rod up through the center, you tap it, and that race will pop up. It may just come right out real easy. We, yeah, you don't want to get, you don't want to stick a screwdriver underneath here and bend this lip at all. But I'll try getting it out of it. If it fights me too much, I'll just kind of clean it up right where it is. I wipe the crease off that low one. I'm sure it's going to show. You can see where all the, the damage is, the little detents that are on it. That's right, you know, as the ball's rolling around, it falls in like a hole, locks up, falls in a hole, locks up. And generally, because of the spacing that they were, all those are evenly spaced apart where the balls were. So they, kind of, they all roll into a, a, a detent, and then they roll out of it at the same time. So that gives it that chug to the front end. I'm going to try taking a, like a little scotch Bright buffer, maybe that one that we're using to polish the parts. See if I can clean that up the best as possible. Uh, sometimes, maybe two, they're even the same size. You can swap the top one for the bottom because the bottom one has all the weight pushing up on it. The front one kind of is more going along for the ride where this one is, you know, all the weight sitting on it. See what happens. Let me try cleaning it first. One of my balls dropped. There it is. And now, I'm gonna wash my balls in oil. It's amazing the stuff you can get away with saying, you're working on something, right? <laughs> I'll bring you back when my balls are clean. That uh, looks like two even piles of 21. So now we got our balls clean, now we gotta go pack them back in grease. So I'm gonna go take that bottom race and just kinda plop a bunch of grease around it and try to set my balls, all 21 of them, <laughs> in a row around it and then lower that front end on it. Hopefully we're not losing a bunch of stuff. And then the top's really easy. Bottom, you gotta fight with gravity. And now we have gooey balls. All right, let's go see if you can lower the bike down where that goes on there without them all falling back down on the bench.
think the weight of the handlebars is uh, hanging on one side. It's getting me a little bit. I'm going to go shove a big old screwdriver down the center of that and I can help steer it. Back up a little bit, see the action. Get in there. Go bloop. I'm going to go up a little. Seems a little high. Don't think that's in right yet. Little ring on top that was holding. Looks like we got it. Yeah, I think we're okay. We'll find out. So now I just gotta do the same, but top one's easy because you just, just kind of go stack them in there and run the race back down on it. That's what was holding me that little collar right there. Alright, I got kind of back together, sort of, just hand tight. This, uh, collar and you know, call it you want to run it down kind of like when you're doing a wheel bearing on a car front wheel bearing where it just has the play taken out of it on a wheel bearing you actually would leave a, a, a hair of play that feels pretty good no binding now seems decent I backed it off a hair what about this as long as it doesn't have any lateral play in the front end. That's what you don't want. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Good. I'm going to go take that triple tree piece that was on there and go clean that up before we put it back on. I should do the handlebars too. I just don't feel like stripping all the, the hardware off of them. Of course, I think about it later. That's why I always wait things work, right? What we should have done. I don't know if we can. I don't know if this is cast steel or cast iron whether we can build a little bit of weld up on this pad so it would be the stop so the handlebars won't like hyperextend. Let me try getting in there with a little die grinder, see if we can get some of the material out of the way. It'll give me a better idea what the metal is too. We could try it, what's gonna hurt? Might get a little bit of splatter on here. Yeah, see if a Dremel can get, get in there, scuff up the top surface a little. sparks that come off of it yeah I think I I'm not sure yet <laughs> what I think my helmet's playing funky my helmet's not on weld it's on grind I'm gonna make it look cross eyed I don't really think that's going to stick. We'll see. The hyena. Well, it's on there for now. Well, Alright, where are we? I think we could put that front fender back on. Are we safe? <laughs> Nothing else we need to take apart. I did run one of the cables wrong. 
this one, I put it back together, I missed it. It's on the wrong side, but it's just a wire. I'll pull it out of the headlight and I'll tuck it back through the center of the triple trees. Is this one in the wrong spot? Should that be back here? I think it might. <laughs> what about the other side? Where's that one going? That one's up here. No. Don't know. That's not a hard fix either, right? Just unscrew it and flip it around. So I'm not taking that apart again. It's the third time I had to fender off. Sometimes this comes about the way you're doing stuff. You, you can look stuff up in a book or uh, online, go find out what the problem is. If I was just working in the shop and for money, I'm trying to fix something. I'm going to approach it totally different from working on something as a hobby and wanting to try to figure out how stuff works. Yeah, you can look up pretty much anything you want right now, but I think it sharpens your skills if you try to figure stuff out instead of just trying to get, it's like doing math, you know, you type it in a, your phone, talk, talk it into your phone and uh, it'll give you the answer. Or if you just take a minute, try to figure it out, it just kind of keeps you sharper. Each one comes with the same output right but it just makes it so that uh you're kind of working on your skill set you're, you're exercising the, the muscle between your shoulders so to speak so that looks pretty decent everything is buttoned up i don't see anything i'm going to detail the handlebars and stuff and, and work on the levers probably work on that headlight too we may want to unless i find something really neat to show you let me just kind of fast forward through that and I'll bring you back when we're... We'll spin the bike back around again and work on the ass end. Now that, <laughs> now that the front wheel looks so good. <laughs> that looks like crap. So maybe we'll... Uh, I don't know if I'll take it off. I'll, I'll look at it because it's still at the... A lot of times there's a lever on the brakes showing you where the shoes... Yeah, worn. It would be like a pointer on a scale. I don't see it on this. But looking at the adjustment, it's all the way back. Generally, people will start, you know, cranking up on it as the rear brakes wear out. Ah, uh, that's undecided. We may or may not take it apart. All right, let me go finish that mess. And uh, we'll get on to something else. So, all the factory connections, except for uh, that one. If we have a problem, I wonder which one it's going to be. So, I popped that new light on it. It looks nice. <laughs> Doesn't work. It looks nice. <laughs> so, I got... Uh, left directional, right directional, not flashing. I think the flasher itself is probably kaput. Sometimes after it runs a while and the voltage comes up, the flasher will heat up and it'll start flashing again. Did it almost work? <laughs> so it seems like most of the lights are working. I don't know if the headlight, if the bike needs to be run. I wouldn't think so, but it may. Either that or we got an issue. Uh, with the switches. So we got high to low beam here and there's an on off over here. So there's a possibility that that is not playing well with others. Will that be the wire that I pulled? No, that was that was this one. For the brake light switch. This is going down the center of the handlebar and runs through into the headlight. We go eh. I don't, have any, I don't have any extra wires. We'll see what happens when we fire it back up again. We'll deal with that later. Tail light, brake light works. Let's go shut power off and possibly, again, those uh, may start working too once it runs a little bit. What do we got? We'll pop the air cleaner back on. I want to spin the bike around. We'll put the ass end uh, up on the jack. I mean, we'll play with cleaning some of that stuff up. Yeah, I'm going to go take the air cleaner. I'll pop that on and I want to just kind of brush up the the bits and pieces up here a little bit get them cleaned up. I think my chances are I can snake that brake lever right back on there again. Ah. I just shoved the bolt back in it. I think pretty good. I said it looks better as far as you know, all the bits and pieces in alignment. Yeah, mirrors are probably the scabbiest part. 
as far as what took damage. Look decent. Keep it indoors. <laughs> and the climate control, it'll stay just fine. Alright, now let's get the bike flipped around and get some of that work done. As far as that back wheel is concerned, I think we should play with our newfound toy. It's getting pretty worn already. Getting close to, like, if you use a flapper disc on those, one of those little, uh, you know, the ones you can spin off, roll locks. It's getting pretty close to the, the back side. We got one more, but see if we can get through this wheel. Burning that one up. Yeah, I'd definitely say it was worn down somehow. <laughs> right, it gives you a little bit on the back side to work with. As you were. It's gonna take that back wheel apart. I really don't think we need to. We'll keep an eye on it in the chain. Although it's rusty looking, I don't see any like links that feel bound up or anything. So I think for now, maybe we'll just give her a really good lube and we'll let her run there, spin around. If I find that it has some issues, we'll get some. The sprockets look good. Again, mostly just if the chain will not have any binding links on it. Let that run. Let it spin around and work itself in. Making a mess. You get the idea. I'm gonna go do that. Work it in. There's one bound right there. A little tight, <laughs> but it, it, it may work itself free once it's got some lube in there. We should fire it up and put it in gear and let her spin. Let's give her a couple of kicks, see what she does. Turn the key on. That's not so easy. Yeah, a little bit of an exhaust leak, I'm not sure. How's that? 
and you rev it, it was seeking from the head pipe. Let's try tightening it up a little bit. That chain's flopping pretty good. I think it'll be just fine. Some dirt gear. Yeah, make sure you tighten it, tighten it up, up just a little bit. Oh, it's nice, huh? Yeah, the chain's fine. I'll wipe off all the excess. You see it? Okay, so now I actually I hit it with WD also to kind of like work it in. Quiet, no noise in the back bearing. And I'm getting ash fixated. Shut that off. Go clean up the bench. I want to get now that we just ran a little bit. I want to change the oil. Get that running out of there while stuff is kind of floating around in it. I think I'm undersizing my bowl. Let's go see. I don't think so. Hopefully that comes out nice and clean. No, oh, got some dirt to it. Hmm. Well, that's why we're changing it, right? I would say it's terrible. I could, I could see through it, but it's not exactly uh, spotless. I'm not questioning my choices of ball. <laughs> Should I grab another one real quick, just in case? I think we're just gonna make it. Well, more than I thought it was gonna. See, now the thing is, I let it fill all the way up to the rim. Now I gotta try to walk across the garage with it without spilling. <laughs> all right, yeah, take that one. You knew I was gonna do that, right? I let that piss for a little bit. Uh, that noise I was thinking it was exhaust leak, I think it was just the air cleaner not being on it yet. I may go try buttoning that up while this is still pissing. Not like I didn't spill it anyway, right? Yeah, wouldn't have made it. Would have been right on the money. I tried to use my new old stock Honda pre-filter that I found upstairs. Didn't make it though. Didn't survive. Oh well. Earl, let's get the plug back in it and get rid of that and get some fresh stuff in it. I think these have some kind of the filter setup or pump setup. It's kind of like a centrifugal that spins, it spins the dirt out of it. At some point, that should probably be taken apart and cleaned. But I think what I'll do for now is we'll just put another thing of oil in it and we'll let that rinse some stuff out. And then, and then. The next time, 30 years from now, <laughs> we'll do it. Kind of want to start wrapping it up. So we got, after this, I think the only thing we have left is the seat to reupholster. Whatever else we can kind of think of, but it should take one quart total. That's my guess. Looks like what came out of it, right? Yeah. So I think for today, tonight, it's like nine o'clock. I wanna go eat. So we'll pick this back up in the morning and we'll fix ourselves a seat. Can't do much riding anyway, because we got two inches of snow today. And it stayed cold, so there's snow everywhere. Not that that wouldn't be fun, right? <laughs> I don't wanna wreck the uh, directionals right away. We'll wipe her out too soon. All right, so I'll see you in a minute tomorrow. All right, that's the next day, and I think it's time we get to get in that seat. A little bit more better looking than that, I'd say. So normally you take a seat cover and you put it out in the sun and let it kind of warm up. You don't have that capacity because it's 19 degrees out. So I got it in front of the heater. You know, let that cook for a little bit, let it soften up. Let's get the old carcass off of there and we'll see what we have to go work with condition of the pan that kind of thing yeah, let's go build a seat looks like it's got a bunch of meat hooks that hold it on there what we can do about getting them we got to stand them all up to put the new one on anyway it looks like they just kind of cut into the pan here and there i wonder if they get something with a hook on it i think it's gonna be a little bit of a pain in the ass i know i'm gonna rake my fingers across it <laughs> 
Maybe we should work this way, right? Yeah. I have a feeling towards the end of this, I'm gonna have a band-aid on. I'm gonna take a few minutes. I'm gonna bend all these up and try to uh, stay out of harm's way. You're waiting for me to cut myself right now, aren't you? <laughs> Little teeth sticking out of there. Yeah, I'm gonna try for something better than that. Baby ignition pliers seem to be working the best for getting the hooks up. I'm kind of steering where I want them. How about we just rip the fabric off? Once the fabric's out of the way, I can dress the hooks instead of trying to make them all purdy. Unbolt that. Yeah, let's go peel that skin off of there, hopefully. I don't have any foam, so we're gonna have to go work with what's here. That's supposed to stay? That might <laughs> that might need to stay. It doesn't look terrible. I wonder if we just kind of go right off. I was thinking possibly like we glue a piece of foam on and then like shave it a little. I wonder if we just do more damage than not trying to just leave it alone. Looks kind of racked too, doesn't it? A little bit. I don't know. I'm gonna take a little bit of time and prep it. Get all these hooks on a good angle that we could wrap the fabric around and I guess this has to go back on it protects it from cutting. It actually looks pretty good. I don't see any cracks or anything anywhere. Another one we did, it was all busted up. I had to go weld the pan all back together. This one seemed decent. That's the glove box. Think anything's in it? No. So you put your registration. Let's, um, I'm gonna go white. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to wipe that out. That's going to rake my knuckles. I'm going to go clean it a little bit and uh, we'll try lining the other cover over it and see how it kind of fits. Worst case, I'm thinking maybe if this is all squished down, maybe we'll put like another, I got like a foam for carpet, you know, like the underlayment. Maybe we'll put that on top of it if we have to build it out a little. It doesn't feel too bad though. I couldn't order one of these. I was trying to find one. Actually, kind of look at the edge of this. I, I think that's going to end up being an issue for us. So I figure we try. That's the whole idea is do something you've never done before. I wonder if we can, this is um, one of those old foam mattress tops. You have a top, it's got that weird kind of memory foam, I think they call it. I wonder if we can go carve this, glue it to it, and then just shave it. I think I have uh, an electric knife, like a, that's oh, an electric knife. <laughs> go see if I can find it. I'm thinking, There we go. Dig that out of there. See how that does on foam. Let's see if she works. Practice on this one, right? Oh yeah. That should work out pretty good. I would guess you probably should I'm, I'm, 
I'm committing after that, right? I got to go try to get. No turning back. Let's just try doing that piece first. If that works, I'll continue on with the rest of it. So we're going to need to carve a piece out. I got a ton of this upstairs. So I'm not worried about wasting it. Let's go with. And I should probably try to make a curve that matches that on the opposite. Let's go with like in the middle of it. Get that glued on there. Let's get rid of some of this extra. We don't need. Cut my fingers off. I think if um, sure hope glue sticks to it. <laughs> if not, we're shoving that piece on with some two-sided tape. Uh. Yeah, let me get some spray glue. We'll spray both of these, let it set up a little bit, and we'll set that on there. We'll try to carve this down to match it. I'll, I'm gonna leave it in a larger piece for now. Might be a little bit easier to work with. them tack up for a little bit. I'm not sure what it says. I think it's like 5 to 15 minutes. shot. Can't feel anything if it's sticky or not. Should I try pulling it away? I think it's got it pretty good. I'm going to hold some pressure on that. Get it to really kind of All little nooks and crannies. Well, I think it's going to hold good enough to do what we need to do. I think once you get the foam probably in place, I don't think there's going to be mu too much chafing of it. You know, your legs are going to be rubbing up and down on it, but it's going to be on the cover, not right on the foam. Yeah. Do some carving. I say we just we'll use the top as a guide, but we'll just try to go right across the top. We'll do the same on the side. I should prop it up on something. Get a piece of wood. I just use, let's go from this side. This side's kind of pulled away a little. I'm gonna try to. Well, we should flip it over. Yeah, let's go do, do it this way. I could see it better, and then we'll do the the angle part of it.
Keep going. The problem is when it's thin, there's not much to, you know, if you try to do a little sliver, it's not as easy as the big piece. Let's go, um, I wonder if it's sander. You think it'll sand or you think it's just gonna, let's, just, let's go try it. Let's get some kind of sander, see if it'll, let's practice with, with this, see what it's like. I wouldn't say it's great. Let's try it. It more kind of pulls at it than anything. I'm gonna try trimming it more with that, with the knife. See how much I can get it whittled down. I think if I had a denser foam like what this was made out of, I probably would have better luck. This is like really squishy. So like, you, know, you see the density of that. And this is just kind of really soft. But I think it'll it'll puff the cover out enough and maybe it'll, it'll just kind of conform. Plus I think if it was like this, it'd probably carve easier. But. I don't want to go any more than that. We'll put the cover on. If it looks stupid, we'll come back and address it. I don't know. I might do another piece. Like, how much better are we going to be able to get this? Is it better to be more puffed out high or not? Hmm. What about the pieces we cut off? Can we, um... Want to try doing that? I don't know how much integrity is left to this, though, you know? Is it pilly? Let's go try that. Let's try gluing some of this material in here. See if that'll work. Knock some of that light stuff off. Should have let the glue set up longer, but uh, I'm getting in a hurry. <laughs> Let's see if uh, we can work with that top. Yeah, this is more like cutting bread. This stuff is really soft. This kind of has a little bit of pushback to it. What do we want to do here? Like that. that works. Use it like a shaver. That work over here? Nah, just on this. It's all learning curve, right? Yeah, I could use a little more glue right up in there. I'm gonna try spraying a little bit of glue in there just in this area. And I think maybe we'll just kind of leave it alone. I think that should crush down on the cover. I wouldn't exactly say it looks awesome. <laughs> but we'll see when the cover's on, right? Yeah, put that cover in front of the heater again. Just try to just find center.
pretty good. Maybe we should do like the front and rear. Try to get like a clip. It's got to get turned this way a little. Let's flip it over so you can get that lip to. You would think if they made it right, it should kind of just line up where you got the same amount of material all the way around. <laughs> uh oh! Noise alert! Let's wait for that to stop. So rudely interrupted. Right, let's go catch one. I want to make sure the the N, my middle letter, is center with that center hook. And she's off just a hair. Nothing to say that's stamped on there right neither, right? It's close. <clears throat> Stab myself. Let's go for one. Famous location. Let's go tap it down. There's enough that wasn't coming out. If we need to redo it, we will. I guess we should look for center of the front. Yeah, that's crooked. I could see it. It's got to go that way. more like the middle yeah it's gonna, that's what's gonna show the most right the very front there in the middle I think if it stays out in the sun too afterwards a little bit Speak now, forever hold your peace. Yeah, I think we could have went with the, uh, like a little thin piece across the whole top. Let's, um, do a side to side. You know, there's a proper way to do this, but. I'm not doing it that way. And hopefully you don't just don't have any big wrinkles in it. You liking it? You hate it. I think all these lumpiness will come out once once I pull the pull it square. Looking pretty easy. It looks like the back is a little that way. I'm looking at that rib. Compared to that one. Oh well. Anyway, well I'm gonna go take a little bit of time and work them all the way around. And I'll bring you back. I don't see any big well this is where the the stuff is stuffed. <laughs> right? Is that the corner? We put the do we glued on? He's all in here. Yeah, she's she's a little you can see how this side rolls off. And this side's still got material to it. Well, the next one will be perfect. Yeah, I'm also turning the camera on while I'm tacking away. I'll tell a little story. We had, um, where I grew up, and it just reminded me of all the stuff we were doing as kids. And how you didn't care about hurting yourself. All the stuff like, like these bikes and ATVs that came out. And safety was not exactly a priority. <laughs> We grew up near a place called, it's called Action Park. And as kids, we called it Traction Park. 
because <laughs> uh, you, you stood a good chance of at least having bruises when you went home that day. It was a uh, amusement park, but it was kind of like amusement park if rednecks made it. You were kind of responsible for your own safety. If you got hurt, it was your fault. There's plenty of ways to go get hurt. They had like, um, I don't even want to call it like a log flume. Not a log flume. A, uh, it's a, uh, you go down the side of the mountain on a cement track with a little cart. It has a little brake handle in the middle of it. I forget what they're called. Well, that's what it started. It was, um, essentially, it started as a ski resort. It's a Mount Vernon ski resort. And um, they uh, wanted something for the summer. So they put that, that flume, that ride in. But I don't think any engineers made it. I think they just kind of winged it. <laughs> So you, you would sit on, say this is the card that you're sitting on, you'd have a handle in between your, your legs. And when you, you set the handle down, I think it apply, you, when you let go of it, it would, it would put like a rub pad and slow you down. Well, half of them didn't even work. And uh, you would launch yourself right, you, it had curves, it wasn't a straight track going down. It's kind of like a roller coaster of sorts. Actually, it's looking pretty good. Um, <laughs> my friend Henry, he, lost, he went right over <laughs> <laughs> right over and off the track it's in front of me and he just disappeared I may not have helped that I was pushing they they would like let one person go like every 30 seconds apart but the, but it took you like 10 minutes to go ride down so 30 seconds apart you could if, if you didn't hit the brakes you'd catch up to the person in front of you and then you push them and then they, they would get nervous they track them faster than they should I think they ended up shutting the park down. I remember um, he couldn't get insurance for the park. And uh, so he started his own insurance company <laughs> and insured himself. I don't think everybody ever got paid. They had like a, it, and I kept building on, they had like a wave pool. They had um, like uh, tanks. I think he shot tennis balls at each other out of like gas powered tanks. They had like little Formula One go-karts. Now this is like mid-70s. I don't know when it shut down. It might even still be a park now. I don't know. But that was like as the crow flies, 10 miles maybe from our house. And I actually think they made a movie of it. It was called um, Class Action Park. <laughs> That's it. I, I don't think I've seen it. That's pretty much how we grew up. You know, funny how none of that stuff would pass today. They had pretty much like a death every year. It was like a badge of honor if you, you survived. How are we looking? Well, I was going by that bead line. It's kind of kind of wavy, but we don't care about that side, right? How's that look? I say terrible. I think some time in the sun too will. Yeah, I think it was good we put that foam in there. I think if we didn't put that foam in there, that might be an issue. And you kind of see just on this side where it drops down a little bit. And this is where. The blue foam was, yeah, so it's softer. It wants to be able to push in more. But at least there's something behind it pushing up. Yeah, a little time in the sun. And go around and see if there's any that I missed. I'm going to tap them down a little bit flatter. I don't think we need to readjust any. I don't think it's going to help us at all. I missed one here. I'm going to go tweak that a little bit. And uh, let's go shove that back. I can put the bracket back on the top yet. Hmm. If I didn't tell you it was off a little bit over there, you wouldn't know, right? Let's go put our crown jewel on. See how that looks. 
We'll just set it up there for now. Latch. Latch is latch. I think uh, a little bit of time in the sun definitely will help. It'll help. Like this is just where two pieces of material are, are put together. You can see it's a little puffy. Same thing there where the seam is. I don't think pulling it taut would do much for it. That looks better though, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, I see him on that side. Just gonna need some heat. Or that's just the way it's gonna be. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw the bolts in the front of it. I'm gonna lay that bike down. Yeehaw. Take the cherry on top of the Sunday. Probably should have shot that black. Well, I had it off of there. Slacker. And the seal came in with a gas cap. I shoved an O-ring on there just to help it. Yeah. That should be the right one. Snug. That should click in the. Oh, yeah. Can't forget it's tramp stamp. A little off on getting pressure washed. It's crooked. <laughs> This might be a very dumb idea, just saying. Well, reason for the clutch, it doesn't exist. All gears up. Yeah. So this was this is why it might be a dumb idea. <laughs> it will be gingerly. Oh yeah. She's spinning. <laughs> It's so smooth, it runs really nice. So we get into the taller gears. <laughs> it's a uh, brake check out. <laughs> this is gonna be squirrely, just saying. <laughs> Not exactly bike weather. I think that was ice that cracked it. Let's go do it on a trail. Ugh. Can't even see what you're going over. I 
still got an air cleaner for it. You can, you can hear it pop, like... Something walked there. Is that a rabbit tracks? Play it first or second? That was first. Low bridge. Coming through, pardon me. <laughs> Nature. Grab a little front brake, this would be a good idea, right? A couple of function checks. Hmm. That one might suck to get around. There. There's a whole bunch of trees down. <laughs> yeah, I think this is give you a short ride. We might have to wait till spring for this one now. <laughs> Can we go anymore the other direction? <laughs> it's definitely a bike you ride with your feet down. Because <laughs> you're ready to wipe out at any moment. <laughs> see if the directionals will work. Yeah. Yeah, when it's running, the directionals work. It has a little bit more voltage going to it. I don't know if you can see it. It's flashing there and there. On the other side. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to get any third gear runs. Because <laughs> she is squirrely. I think 20 something miles an hour across the ice is a great idea. <laughs> Put it back in first. Seems pretty nice though. I don't see any issues with it other than the headlight. I popped it off real quick to see if any wires were off. I didn't see any. I have a feeling because when you turn the lights on, the tail light comes on. So the, the on off switch seems to be working. Let's go stop it right here. The on off switch seems to be working for the headlights. Uh, just there's no headlight function. So the only other thing I would think would be is the, the high low beam switch there. Maybe it's got a broken wire. When we were on it, when I got it, the, the uh, thing was turned. Let me get you off of me. Yeah, when I got it, the uh, lever was turned. It was kind of twisted around on itself and it had a blown a fuse when I hooked the battery up and then when I corrected that to the right spot it turned around and didn't blow the fuse anymore so it's probably got some chafed wires or broken wires where they go through because they go through the handlebar down through here and they pop out here so I have a feeling the issue is probably right inside here so we're gonna go deal with that on our own that an air cleaner what a nice little bike
<laughs> okay, I think that worked out pretty good for a shakedown run. I don't see many issues. Anything to deal with is again the air cleaner. It's a little lean kind of here when you go to take off a box a little plus you know being 20 degrees doesn't help things neither but when the air clean is on it'll cause a little bit more drag and richen it up just a hair and a warmer temperature and there i think seems to have worked out pretty good i don't see anything major issue <laughs> looking at the seat right away so i'm good with that i think our carving the foam out was a, a more of a plus than a minus See what it does over time. Kind of wonder if it wants to pull away and kind of like it would it will show a line or something, but we'll see. Yeah, it worked out really nice. Good looking little bike. It's kind of to believe that that's 50 years old. It just doesn't seem right. It was built 50 years ago. 49. Still. Yeah, Survivor. Original paint. Mostly. <laughs> Other than the muffler. All right, guys. With that, I'm going to go sign off. Thank you all for hanging out. It's uh, really kind of enjoyable just to pick away at this stuff. and It's kind of like you know, people that put puzzles together. It's kind of that same mentality. You get lost in what you're doing. You know you're really kind of getting into it where time kind of disappears. You just get focused on, okay, you're, while you're working on one thing, like what's the next thing I can go work on and start picking away at? And a, uh, a plan kind of comes together. And you stick at it long enough gets done <laughs> most stuff you know all right guys that i'm gonna sign off well thank you all for hanging out doing some wrenching saving old junk on the cheap and we'll do it again sometime soon till then later yeah i popped that switch off so right there was the wire was grounding out you see the whites wore away on the end and then right there there's a break wires going down well, there's your problem there's the hole it went through and then it got pinched right there so I just got to feed all those wires back out repair them and feed them back through the handlebars every middle-aged man's childhood growing up right there I wished it could be anyway America, 70s America. Oh, yeah, it's not too good. <laughs> That's gonna be crusty. Oof, all the smell. And it has fuel sitting in it. That's not a good sign. Yeah. You wanna take a peek? I'm sure you did. Oh, oh, she's rough. Yeah, the sides of the tank are all boogered up. I think that tank comes out of there, I hope. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> That's part of the frame, we're screwed. All right, so we're gonna have to do a bunch of work on that. Hopefully it doesn't have any rot holes going right through it. I wonder if the CT70's got the same setup to it. i say at least 20 years. Put that on just to keep the odor in. All right, let's get it up in the air. Let's start looking into the engine part of it and we'll start working our way out. Give ourselves a general assessment. What's in that little, what's in here, anything? How do you open it? Twist it. A toolkit in there? Nothing. A rack bites me. Yeah, no toolkit. 
All right, yeah, let's get her up in the air and uh, start seeing what we got for an engine. 